Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to the Final Fantasy XIV video. Today, we're going to be doing a new series on how to make gill with each an individual expansion. So how this is going to work, we're only going to be using gill methods available to that expansion. But if we're in later expansions, we're also going to be able to use previous expansions in conjunction with the current ones that we're currently in. This was an idea that was brought to me by a subscriber of mine during my guild compendium, and I thought that is a perfect video to make. So right now we're going to be doing a Realm Reborn guild making only. And then when we get to Heaven's Ward, we'll be adding in Heaven's Ward and then a Realm Reborn, and so on and so forth. So let's start with the challenge log. This is unlocked in Limbs of the Menses Adventures Guild right after you accept the quest for the Sustasha Dungeon. Rising to the challenge would be right here with this NPC. And this is something that you would do every week and it resets every Tuesday. So go into the main menu under logs and find it at the bottom. So starting off with battle, complete three dungeons via the duty roulette for three times, that's a thousand gil. Complete five dungeons for 2000 gil. Complete three guild hests for a thousand gil. Complete 10 for 2000 gil. Give player accommodations five times for a thousand gil and defeat enemies with your chocobo out 20 times for 1000 gil must be comparable to your level and do it 100 times for 2000 gil pvp does not give you any gil but by doing each of these challenges it goes towards your completion which will give you a crap ton of gil what it means by complete unique challenges basically means each one of these counts as unique so by doing these you'll get that filled even faster if you want to do them. You don't have to because they don't give you gil. Fates, complete five with the highest ranking possible, doesn't matter which one. And then complete 10 with the highest ranking for 2,000 gil and 1,000 gil respectively. Leave quests, which you get 100 leave allowances and it takes about 17 days to get 100. You can do five with different plates, which I'll show you in a bit. And complete 20 leave quests, doesn't matter what plate it is, 20 times for 2,000 gil. Crafting and gathering, Craft 30 items for 1,000 gil. Craft 20 high quality items for 2,000 gil. Successfully desynthesize items 5 times for 2,000 gil. And gather comparable to your level 100 times. And trigger gathers boon comparable to your level 30 times for 2,000 gil. Fishing, catch 30 fish for 1,000 gil. Catch 10 large fish for 2,000 gil. Spearfishing is unlocked in Stormblood, so this doesn't count. And Wanderer's Tales unlocks in Heaven's Ward. Treasure Hunting, which is unlocked in Wineport. Gather three uh, Time Worn maps for 1,000 gil. Open five treasure coffers and obtain your contents while treasure hunting five times for 2,000 gil. Treasure map dungeons unlock in Heaven's Ward, so you can't do that. Beast Tribes, complete five tribe quests. And then complete 15. You only can do 12 per day. So you'll be doing this on the second day. Your grand company does not give you gill, but doing this for the complete section will help you out. Retainers have a retainer complete 10 ventures. You can either be specific items or quick ventures. And this one has to be the 18 hour exploration ventures. You must have three retainers in order to get this complete because two of them can only give you 14 since it's 18 hours per day. So you're going to have to shell out $2.99 for your subscription to add in a third retainer. The Gold Saucer does not give you gill, but this is towards the completion section if you do it. Others, this is not going to be for you because this is for Endwalker here and this is for Stormblood. So this doesn't work in Realm Reborn. And then you have the completion section. You have 10,000 gill for completing 5 unique challenges, 10, 15, and 20. And then for the 30, you get 15,000 gill. So doing this every single week can make you a quite a lot of gill. Now, over here is going to be the elite quests which you unlock in A Realm Reborn. So you have battle, crafting, and gathering. So when you go to each of these here, as you can see the plate in the upper right hand section, that is what they're talking about with different plates. So as you can see here, each one has a different plate. I recommend doing this on a battle job. And if you're going to be doing that for the experience on a crafter or a gatherer, do the fifth one on a gatherer or a crafter to get the experience from the challenge log itself. You will get gill from 
the leaf quest. It'll differ by the leaf quest. And like I said, you get about six per day. And it takes about 17 days to get 100 allowances. But this is where you guys will unlock leaf quests also. This will also lead to unlocking the guild hests as well, which will do that in the open world. Now let's talk about the roulettes. So under the duty finder, in a born, you'll only have access to level 50 once you hit level 50. Leveling, trial, means scenario, guild hests if you unlocked it, alliance raid if you unlocked a crystal tower, and that's about it. The rest of these will unlock as you get to Heaven's Ward and beyond. Frontlines is unlocked level 30, but that doesn't give you guild. So, as you can see to the right here, you have what is called Adventure in Need. You will get specifically what it says underneath that, which is 7200 if you do this as a healer. And the top one, which has a little arrow pointing up, I think that depends on what dungeon that you get. And certain dungeons will give you guild by killing the enemies. That's basically from a realm reborn all the way up to the leveling dungeons in Heaven's Word, and then anything beyond that, the gill will stop dropping from the enemies. So you always want to make sure that you are a venture in need. If you're a tank and a healer, you'll most likely see those more than a DPS. As you can see, the Alliance Raid has a DPS. It's really rare that you will see that happen. So the level 50, 60, 70, 80 dungeon gives you 7200 for a venture in need. Leveling gives you 12,000 as well as Grand Company Seals. Trial gives you 4320. Main Scenario gives you 7200, Guild Hest gives you 1800, Alliance Raid gives you 7200, and that's about it. So do these every single day for the extra experience, the guild that comes from the enemies defeated, and of course the event you need if you can meet it. Next is the Hunt, after getting 2nd Lieutenant and of course level 50. Let the Hunt begin, it will be in your Grand Company. So the Hunt board will have Daily and Weekly. Daily being every day. You have two fates with 2,000 gil apiece, that's 4,000, and 20 allied seals, which is the hunt currency from a realm reborn. These can be a bit of a pain, so if you don't want to do these, you don't have to. The other ones are going to be three random mobs in the open world for 1,000 gil apiece after completion and eight allied seals. So make sure you pick up these every single day and every single week. Next is going to be the beast tribes. So in Rome Reborn, we have the Amalja, the Sylphs, the Cobalt and Sahagan are battle jobs, and the Ixels are for crafters. So we're only going to be doing the battle jobs. So after you have complete the Stone Vigil dungeon, the Beast Tribes will be able to be unlocked. So your Lieutenant and your Grand Company will take care of unlocking those. This guy here will take care of the Sahagans and the Cobalts. The one in Oldah will take care of the Amalja, and the one in Gudania will take care of the Sylphs and the Ixels. So here we are with the Kobolds. Now remember, you must level up your reputation with your Beast Tribes in order to get the max gill out of this, and that might take some time to complete. So this over here will have the lowest gill, which is 360, and this will be for every single Beast Tribe in Realm Reborn. And you get one venture for your retainers, Poetics, and Reputation up. And to show you that's the same for everything. Next in line, we'll give you the second highest, which is 540. You'll get more reputation points from this guy. And that would be for each one. As you can see. And the highest will give you 780 kill. One token for exchanging for goods, poetics, and of course, materia, which are useless. So you're going to vendor this for 99 gil. But that's going to be one each at the highest rank. So you only get 12 allowances per day, so you're going to be doing 4 out of the 5 tribes. Going forward, the beast tribes will not give you as much kill as the Arumber Born tribes, so you might end up coming back here. But if you're trying to reputation off everybody in the game, then you're going to have to do each expansion's beast tribe. But if you're going for gill specifically, Arumber Born will give you the highest every single time. So make sure you do your beast tribes every single day. So next is treasure maps. To unlock treasure map hunting in Wineport, right about here, you'll find treasure in tribulations to unlock your dig and decipher actions for treasure map hunting. Now the lowest is going to be the level 40 nodes for botanist and miner and probably fisher, but it's easier to do it with a botanist or miner. 
So right now we are in South Shroud, right outside Earth's Gift. Now, if you do not have Luck of the Mountaineer or the Botanist equivalent, which is level 55, you're just going to have to go around to each node until you find yourself a leather map. Nothing else but leather because there's a specific item that comes from here that is worth a crap ton of gil. After finding it, use the Decipher. And then it'll give you a location at random, which you must find in the map. So this is going to be a little bit difficult to find if you're not well versed with the map. But it's going to be right here. So if you're on controller, L1 and R1 together will set a map location. So we're going to head over to Camp Drybone and I'll show you guys what to do. Once you reach your location, you're going to use the dig under general or put it on your hotbar. And if you're within a certain yalm of your map, it will pop up. So you'll be defeating enemies once you open your treasure chest. Once the enemies are completely defeated, open your treasure chest and you have nine minutes to complete it. All right, so we did not get the Lotus Leaf, which is ultimately what you're looking for. But if you're lucky enough, you'll find a Moonstone, which can give you 1200 kill from a vendor. So they're completely useless outside of certain items to exchange for them. So you're just going to vendor them for 1200. And then you also get Gil, a piece of gear that you can turn into your grand company for grand company seals and random loot. So ultimately what you're looking for, like I said earlier, was the Lotus leaf. Right now these leaves can go for almost 500,000 Gil on my server and they make the parasol, but they also can make the eastern indoor pond for inside of your house. And I think this is what's causing people to raise in price is the indoor pond. So if you're lucky enough to get the lotus leaf from these treasure chests, sell them and reap the rewards. Now, since we're on the topic of treasure maps, the next thing is going to be doing the mysterious maps. This is gonna cost you 75 poetic tombstones for each map. In order to unlock this feature, you must go through the Arumberborn Relic Weapon up to past the book phase, which is the most annoyingest part of the Arumberborn Relic. You don't have to complete the relic to get this. You just need to do a couple of phases to get to the point where you can unlock the mysterious maps. So you'll get one map every 75 tombstones. You can put one in your saddlebags of your chocobo so you can get at least three at one time the second one you can decipher since the map goes into your key items and then you can get your third map in your inventory now if you want one for free this woman over here will have a repeatable quest every single day called morbid motivation She'll give you one mysterious map from doing 50, 60, 70, 80 roulette. All right, so my second map is here in Outer Lenosha. So same concept. Enemies will spawn, you kill, and then open the chest. So these ones will give you 1692 gil and that's going to be static. So if you do 2000 poetics, you'll get around 49,000 something gil. All right. Now these Alexandrites are used in the next step after the book step to get stats on your relic weapon. So if you're doing your relic weapon, hold on to these for that step. So last of the non-market board ways of making gil and rainbow born is the grand company turn-ins. Now, somebody said that you have to be, I believe it's second sergeant in your grand company rank. So once you have that, you'll be able to do the expert deliveries, which will pass in any green 
blue or pink gear. Pink is a rumber born. Blue is usually raid gear or tombstones, and green is crafted. So by having the seal sweetener buff from your free company, you have a 10% increase to Grand Company seals. Which, as you can see here, if you pass in the gear, you get a 10% increase. And that is going to be with your professional officer under expert delivery. Then go to the quartermaster. Under this tab here, you're going to have to get these ranks in order to unlock these items here. And they sell for 360 gil to any vendor. Now, if you get 90,000 Grand Company Seals, which is the max, I think it's around 50-something thousand gil for 150 of these, which I have 750 on me right now, so I don't have to get any more. So now we're going to go over to a vendor, and I'm going to show you guys how much gil that you guys can get with at least 750, but I'm going to reduce it down to 150 because that's the max that you get for 90,000 Grand Company Seals. All right, so I split up my duck bones to 150. So I'll talk to any vendor and sell. That gives you 54,000 out of 150 duck bones, which is 90,000 Grand Company Seals, which you must be a Storm Captain or Serpent Captain or Flame Captain, depending on your Grand Company, to get that 90,000 Grand Company Seal limit. Otherwise, you're going to be using whatever you have as your limit. It really doesn't matter since they stack. And then the rest of the 600, I get 216,000. But that is all of the non-market board ways of making gill. So now onto the meat and potatoes of this gill video, selling stuff on the market board. So now for the market board section of this video. Free trial players cannot do this because they have no access to the market board as a free trial player. So you have to sub to the game to get access to this content. So most of this gill took me about two to three days to accumulate, but this was in about a week's time of selling. So the first retainer here has a bunch of stuff that I gathered and sold from monster drops. So we have alumen, silver ore, mithrite ore, or mithril, boar leather and algoat leather, or skins, if you want to sell those as well, cobalt ore, which is used in a lot of submarine and airship part making, Fleece to make wool, effervescent water to make natron, black aluminum for the raptor and pious skin leather, spruce logs, which is used in a lot of, like I said, recipes that inquire the submarine and airships, oak logs, which is something I just hold randomly. The dyes here are from quick ventures with your retainers. If you get a retainer coffer, which is very RNG. Plus, if you get the pure white or jet black dye, you're looking at half a million gil. And also the metallic uh, dyes as well. And then dark steel ore, which is also used in airship and submarine making, as well as recipes in Heaven's Award and beyond. So it's a very versatile ore. And I only can go back as far as the 6th of March. Now this retainer has all of the shards, crystals, and clusters that I have sold. Regardless of what expansion that you're in, these will always sell regardless. Now I focused on clusters because most people in endgame require clusters to make their endgame recipes. But crystals, clusters, and then shards fall off after Heaven's Ward. So you probably want to focus on crystals and clusters. Lightning, wind, and water clusters are the most lucrative, and ice is the ones you want to avoid. Followed by fire, and then earth. I try to stay around 500 a piece, because a lot of people are selling for over a thousand. So by doing the lower half of the quantity, you get people that want lower amounts instead of higher amounts. But this is where most of my gill came from. Here we have grade one materia. Now grade one materia is the hardest materia to get because there's no way of getting these outside of spirit bonding. And I'll show you guys how to do that a little bit later. 
So the red ones are crit, determination, and direct hit. Purple, skill and spell speed. And yellow is for tenacity and piety. Since this is for the Arumbreborn Relic step after the book step, a lot of people will be buying these to complete their Arumbreborn Relic weapons for glamour. And to get the Venture Coffers, you'll be doing Retainer Adventures, which is unlocked around level 15 to 17. And your retainers can bring you back gear that can be transmitted to the Grand Company through Grand Company Seals. So you'll be doing this constantly in order to get your coffers for the dies. So the farther in the game that you are, the better loot that you'll get. So this retainer, I try to start selling the items from the class quest for crafters. But because this was hit or miss, I kind of didn't go far into it. So when you're doing your class quest, always make two. One for yourself and then one for the market board. So try to make them high quality. So I only made a decent chunk from there. Now, as you can see on my person... I have 1,253,531. This skill alone came from doing the challenge log, leave quests, treasure maps, and the duty finder on top of the duck bones and the squadrons. So that's all the guild I have made on top of what I made from my retainers. And now for the level one battle materia spirit bonding portion. Now, first thing you want is to have a gatherer. Because the battle accessories are classified as all classes can wear them, your gatherers can wear them as well. And yes, you can spirit bond these even as a gatherer. So you want the level 20 brass ear cuffs, the level 16 brass gorget, level 17 hard leather wristbands, and two brass rings. It's because the more you meld, the higher the spirit bond rate will be, and high quality also increases the spirit bond rate. So I had grade one control on the market board since they were cheap and I melded them into here as much as I could. Obviously I only wanted the three because they got expensive and this is all I was able to get. You can spirit bond these suckers even at level 90. You will still get spirit bond rate, which is pretty cool. But you're going to be gathering items that you're going to be selling on the market board. So you're going to kill two birds with one stone by doing it this way. You also are going to be using the spirit bond potions that you can get off the market board. Make sure they're high quality because high quality gives you a plus one. So we got six for a superior spirit bond potions. And you also can use manuals from the squadrons if you have those available as well. And these last for two hours. You're also going to be using FC actions or free company actions if you have free company. That which binds us to to increase spirit bond rate for 24 hours. Talk to the OIC quartermaster under actions for that. And they're going to cost you... 6,020 credits for that if you have the trait from your free company to reduce the amount of credits that you need. So we're going to go gather some black alumen, which is going to be quarry mill for this example. Alright, so here we are in South Shroud again. So the first thing you want to make sure is that your quick gathering is on. Make sure your buffs are up, your gear is equipped. And make sure you're picking something that you're going to be selling. So every two hits, this will gain one spirit bond or one percent, and that goes for every other piece as well. They will all increase together, and then you go to the next one. Try not to focus on the spirit bond, focusing on gathering. Now one up again. There one up again. So rinse and repeat. All right. I usually do this with alumen, iron ore, cobalt ore, and the mithril ore as well. And when your spirit bond is done, when it hits 100%, look at your grid down here. This is your gear grid. Once it turns white, then you can extract your materia, which is unlocked in the bonfire with Mutamix in central Thanalan where you'll be able to do it here. Make sure you do not hit retrieve because that takes the gear, the, the material out of the gear. So make sure you're hitting extract. 
Now let's check the market board for all the stuff that I have sold in the past week. Remember to do your research on your server to see which one of these items are selling the most and the best. This way you guys don't waste your time. So first thing we'll start off with is the pure white dye. So these suckers are going for almost 500,000 gil on my server because they're so hard to get because of the venture coffers. You also can get them from something else, but that's going to be in the Shadowbringers expansion. So don't worry about that. Just focus on doing the quick ventures with your retainers and try to hopefully get a coffer to give you these dies. Next is going to be the Jet Black die. I think these are a little bit cheaper than pure white. Nope, just about the same. 574,000. But they went up to 600,000, but some bunch of idiots decided that 600,000 wasn't enough and we need to go lower. There's no excuse for that. But uh, yeah, those are the two most expensive dives you will ever find. So next, let's go over the owl goat leather. So like I said earlier, these are staple in most recipes. I forgot to put the D in there. But these will be for beginners who are trying to make a little bit of gill. So here's the skins at 375 a piece. Because a lot of recipes require these, I probably would sell them by like stacks of 20 or 30. So like I said, they are pretty low but it's a good way to start if you're low level. And if you make the leathers themselves, a little, a little bit more expensive. Next, we're gonna go over the boar leather and skin. These are one of my personal favorites. So the hide goes around 400 on my server. And the leather themselves go for almost a thousand and high quality also sells the best as well. Next is the fleece, one of my staples in my gill making guides. A little bit on the low side, but again, they are abundant as I showed you earlier and they do make the wool, which I'll show you guys as well. The wool yarn and the cloth if you guys want to make them yourself. As you see, the wool yarn is really expensive. I have no idea why anybody would pay that much for those, but to each their own. But yeah, high quality and normal quality for that. And the undyed wool and cloth. Only seven hits, but 1400 gil, not bad. And sells quite nicely. So yeah, I would probably would make the cloth. Going back to the Elko horns. Around 500 a piece on my server, not bad, but they're a little over the place when it comes to the sales history. And to show you guys the horn glue, if you guys are interested, goes for around 1200. So yeah, there you go. I would sell the horns over the glue, but that's your choice. Next, the mithril ore. Which is also uh, a word that I recommend gathering for spirit bond's sake. So usually you want to sell around sex of 99, so they're pretty low. But if it's the only thing you have really to gather, definitely recommend it. Cobalt, which is used, like I said earlier, in a lot of airship and submarine making. So 300 for around 99. Which sells quite a lot, even though it's one person. But you'll be using a lot of cobalt. So it's definitely worth gathering those as well. Dark Steel is next. So there's Dark Steel Ore. Around 500 to 600 on my server. It's 100 hits because a lot of people are gathering them. And one person basically bought them all. And now for the Crystals, Clusters, and Shards. So we'll start with the Fire Clusters. So as you can see here, a lot of people are selling a thousand, three hundred thousand, or three thousand, six thousand, five thousand. But as you can see, they're kind of like all over the place. But because everyone's doing a thousand and above, I kind of stay with the five hundred. So the five hundred ones are basically the ones I sold. 
That's 130 gil per crystal. The ice, like I said, avoid. Wind clusters, 135, which is not bad. So you can make like 100,000 gil with like 500. As you can see. Earth is just below or just above the ice cl uh, clusters in price. Lightning clusters, again, it's with the water. It's over 100. And the water clusters themselves, which is 209, but they could have gone higher, as you can see. But because I need to hold some for myself for Dawn Trail, that's why I stick with 500. Now uh, for the crystals, water, cl uh, water crystals, a little bit lower, but again, they will sell, guaranteed. Lightning. Same boat. Earth crystals. And wind. Ice, like I mentioned, try not to focus on them too much. But for the crystals, there are a good alternative to uh, blacksmith because blacksmith can use fire, but because armor can make the same thing, that people can use their ice as a substitute. And fire is probably one of the most used of the crystals because they used in goldsmith as well as culinarian. And as for the shards, fire is the only one that is useful in Heaven's Ward. Ice is an alternative to the fire. Wind for a lot of goldsmith items. Earth for your leather worker. We're just going to speed through this. Lightning shards. And water. Next, materia. So grade one crit, which is the most expensive one. Almost going for 10,000. Next is Determination. It's on the low end. And Direct Hit for the red. So it's Crit, Direct Hit, and Determination in order of price. Since you need a lot of these to get to the part two, which is grade two, when you're doing the scroll step, skill speed. And when you extract materia, it's not under your control what you get. It's going to be RNG. And spell speed. But because the relic weapon stats do not matter, take what you can get. And tenacity. So next, let's look up silver ore. Silver ore is very universal. So, yeah, I'm going to buy that out. So here we have around 400 gil, but everybody else was undercutting them because everyone's impatient, but if they are expensive, try to get as many as you can. So yeah, section 99 will work well because like I said, they are used in other recipes and other expansions. So more silver ore, the better. And of course the silver ingots as well that I forgot to mention also sell and make sure to sell high quality because the class quest requires one. Okay, so I'll try to sell those as well. Effervescent water. Same boat as the silver ore, around 200 something gil. These are also for a class quest for miner. The alumen. It won't make you filthy rich, but it's something you guys can get at low levels and people always need alumen. As you can see here. And black alumen for the other half of the leathers. And the last thing is that lotus leaf that I mentioned earlier. Now this used to be tied to one thing, which is the parasol. But now the lotus leaf is that pond that I showed you earlier. So now these suckers have skyrocketed. And there's only four hits. Since most people use their map for the current expansion, the other ones don't get used very often. So... As you can see here, they went up in price. Except for this idiot who sold theirs for 100,000 gil. 100, gil. 
Now, if we look at the Time War map for leather, these guys went up to 30,000. Or up to 40,000, if you can see, if you see here. But yeah, people would often buy these to get the leaf to basically make a turnaround. So yeah, make sure you gather your leather map every day. You only get one per 18 hours, so that's one per day. But that is going to be everything that I have sold on the market board. All of the market board list options as well. And if we take everything out, I can show you guys the grand total. And like I said, this was in a week's time. And this is just a Rome Reborn as well, which is kind of insane. So in a week's time, market board and non-market board options with the Grand Company, I made a whopping 6,834,404 gil. And like I said, took me less than a week. And that's in a Rome Reborn. Now I can imagine Heaven's Ward and beyond because we got Blue Mage and Heaven's Ward with the Vault and all that stuff. Imagine the guild that you guys can make going forward. But this is going to be for a Rumber Born. Heaven's Ward will be sometime in the near future. So look forward to that. And I'll see you guys in that video. And that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share for more Final Fantasy XIV content and help with the YouTube algorithm. If you guys want to support my channel even further, consider becoming a Patreon supporter, YouTube member, or support me on Ko-Fi. Links in the description down below. And a huge thank you to all my YouTube members, Patreon supporters, and Ko-Fi members. And a huge extra thank you to the members on screen. So until next time, we you for walking the glorious light of Lord Bahamut. And always remember to keep forging ahead. Take care.